know, when we look at the, the flower, it could be just a flower. But if we pay attention to it, if we have the awareness of it, we could see the fire in the flower. We could see the light in the flower. We could see the hand of the Creator in making this flower. So the revelation of, of Mount Sinai is not once in a lifetime, it's not something happened 3,500 years ago. It can happen to us at any moment. When you hold in your children, that's Mount Sinai. You see the God, you see the light, you see the fire, the, the goodness begin holding your own children. I can't see. Anything in our life. The, the animals that we you know we have in our lives. We can look at them as an animal. It would be like a revelation of light and happiness and joy and blessing within the animals in our lives. So the message of, of the Zohar about this revelation is, and the Torah specifically talks about when you open the Hekal and you take up the Torah, the Zohar says if we could only see, uh, uh, remove the veil from our eyes, to see the light, the fire, and the excitement, and the creator within opening the Hekal. So, it's not we are waiting for a miracle to happen to us. We are not waiting for something good to happen to us. It's our perception, how we look at life. Every moment of the revelation of Mount Sinai, every moment in our life, every joy, every moment, every happiness, every friend, every family, every lesson I learned from the Torah could be the revelation of Mount Sinai. So, my message is, the, the, the Torah message is, look at life in a different angle. Look at it, whatever you, you deal with, whatever you go through, see the fire, see the excitement, see the happiness, see the lightning, see the creator within that situation. And the third message of, of today, what is Torah? Why, why we love the Torah so much? Why? why 600 souls of the Mount Sinai, the unified soul, with this excitement, they were receiving the Torah. I just spoke about being open to listening, and I hear so many whispers in the room. So, please, uh, let's, let's listen to this last point, and we're going to move on to the Bible Mount's reading. What is Torah? I, I, I search and I I knew we have a paradise, but I tried to come up with a very simple way how we can explain what is the Torah in our life. We all love Torah, we all worship the Torah, we all study the Torah. I was thinking, you know, the King Solomon was studying the Torah, the King David was studying the Torah. Now we have this Mary to study the Torah. What is the purpose of studying the Torah? Uh, it's so difficult to concentrate, please, you know, if you can stay quiet for another three minutes, I promise we're going to move on. Uh, a simple way to explain Torah, when we get to the Ten Commandments, the first four, he says, I am Hashem, I am God. Every time he recites Shema Israel in the end, he says, Ani Adonai Elohim, I am God. Are we God? Why do we keep reading, I am God? It's not, we are not the God, He is the God. So why do we keep reciting, I am the God, I mean, you know, I'm the God. I, I learned from an amazing Kabbalist this week, this subject of I am, man. Who is this I? Who is this me within myself, ourselves? You know, the psychologists for the past thousand years try to explain what is I, what is me. Who is this me? Who is this I within me? So the Kabbalists explain that there is five aspects to I, to who we are. The first one is I am. I am. We are born in a certain country, most of us in Iran. We are born to certain parents and we are born to certain astrological signs. This is who we are. This is who we are. We cannot change it. This is who we are. We're born in a certain country with certain characters and habits. And we're born with certain parents with certain mentality. 
and we have we are under the influence of the stars we're born in a certain month. So that's I am, that's who we are. The second one is I think, I think, you know, we the they explain up to age 35 we are accepting, we're acceptable, we're accepting new wisdom, new way of life. After age 35, we are just reacting, reacting to those lessons we learned, to those experiences we have. So I think who I am is all depends on the experiences we have, to the challenges we have, to my limitations that I have. So not necessarily it's who you are. This is from past experiences, from past challenges and obstacles. The third one is what people want me to do. What people want me to do. We live in, in Hollywood, we live in LA, it's a very difficult city. We all live by the standard of the society. Not necessarily I can live my life the way I want to live, but we have to live up to the society, up to the outside world. And it's put a lot of pressure on us. It's not necessarily who we are. We just have to be, we have to live the way the society wants us. The fourth one is I want to be. The Zohar explained his amazing uh, lesson. He says, you know, somebody has a gift to be a carpenter. He born as the best carpenter in the world. But he wants to be a shepherd, for example. So he will never be the best the good shepherd, and he's going to miss out on what the gift he has as a carpenter. So there is another aspect of us that I want to be something else. Instead of finding out what you're good at, what is your gift? And in Kabbalah we learn by study Kabbalah, by study your Torah portion, by study your uh, astronomical sign when you would know exactly what you need to be. So I talk about four different I and me that is not the truth. What is the Torah come to teach us? The Torah come to teach us what you should be. What you should be. So the whole purpose of receiving the Torah, studying the Torah, uh, learning the Torah is what I should be. What is the platform? What is the program for me? What is my best potential that I can achieve? What is the highest level of consciousness I can, I can be? So, in a very simple way, I see a lot of young people here, in a very simple way, the Torah come to teach us what you should be. Every each of us has his own baggage from the past life. Each one of us has his own tikkun and correction. The only way we can get out of this package, the only way we can uh, achieve our tikkun, achieve our maximum potential, is by studying the Torah. So, the Ezrat Hashem, the Sukkot Shabbat, the Sukkot Torah, the Sukkot Baranitsa, men, we all, through the Torah, through the study of the Torah, we want to learn what we should be. Shabbat shalom.